Sega. So when I did my Big the Cat challenge video, the uh, Sonic Adventure using only Big the Cat video, I was surprised to find out that you guys were more interested in seeing a Gamma playthrough than an Amy one, mostly because I used Amy as a substitute for Big on a lot of instances, but for some reason, I guess when I showed Gamma on screen and, and you noticed that like his timer was going down, that must have prompted a lot of you to want to see a Gamma playthrough, so I figured, you know what, why not? Let's, let's go for it, let's do a Gamma playthrough. This shouldn't be as difficult as Big the Cat's playthrough, and... Technically, I was right. I really wasn't expecting this playthrough to be what it was, and you'll see what I mean in just a bit. Before we ask the question, is it possible to beat Sonic Adventure using only Big the Cat? And now the question lies on, is it possible to beat Sonic Adventure using only E-102 Gamma? And the question is still no, but once again, I think it's interesting to see why the answer is no, as opposed to just answering the question right away. Because, again, when it comes to comparing Gamma to Big, you think, okay, well, there's way more you can do as Gamma. Gamma's faster, he can jump higher, he has the Vulcan Cannon, there's so much more that Gamma can do compared to Big, but... Is there? That's the question of the day, because I honestly didn't think I was going to be asking that question. I thought I knew for sure that he was better than Big, and boy was I surprised. <laughs> So, business as usual, we start off with Sonic and his adventure. Much like with Big, I am going to be skipping the cutscenes because there's a huge possibility that it's going to crash, so there's really no point in watching that. Our first foray into Sonic's story, as we've seen before, is the fight against Chaos Zero. And right off the bat, something that I thought was incredible was that you cannot lock on to Chaos's brain. Like, I thought you know, why not, right? Like, it's something that Sonic can homing attack, it's something that I'm pretty sure, like, Knuckles, Tails, Amy, like, I think everyone, now that I think about it, like, Amy can use her hammer, Big can use his fishing rod, Knuckles can, like, glide into him, whatever. Gamma's, like, the only one that can't hurt Chaos, and I don't know why that is. Like, the, the way that things are programmed in this game, objects that are able to be homing attacked or able to be hit at all, that can be locked onto as Gamma, they're, like, different things, but you, you can't even jump on his head as Gamma either. Like, it's so interesting to me because because I figured for sure I would be able to do this. So I switched over to Amy because I figured like, okay, well, I did it as big last time because it was possible. I didn't really do anything with Amy in terms of chaos. So again, I'm going to be switching to other characters to fill in to what the character of the challenge can't do. And yeah, Amy can hit chaos just fine. No problem at all. Unfortunately, that's where the problem started because immediately after defeating chaos, the game crashed. And you'll remember that with Big, the game crashed a lot. It crashed even more with Gamma, and I really do not understand why. I did once again update the mods that I had selected, but I figured, you know, there's probably gonna cause less compatibility issues, who knows? That was not the case at all. And this time around, I swear that every little thing crashed the game, from accidentally starting a cutscene, to ending a level, to switching to a character, a bunch of stuff that didn't even crash the game as Big, you know? like. I at least with Big, I felt like I had a little bit of leniency when it came to the cutscenes. Like, you know, they gave me a little bit of wiggle room to skip the cutscene before the game crashed. Uh, it only really crashed when I hit the action button during gameplay. It didn't crash on me during gameplay for Gamma, thank goodness, but it crashed pretty much everywhere else, and that made it just as, if not more, annoying to do as Gamma. But now we start off with the very first stage that we can do, which is Emerald Coast. At first I figured like there was no point in doing the adventure mode, just because, well, what matter are the stages? Can you beat the stages? But I also figured like, okay, well what about restrictions though? Like, can I beat Emerald Coast and however many stages there are before Sonic even meets with Gamma, before I get Gamma's jetpack or his blaster, can I do any of that? So the first thing that we're coming across here is that booster pad that Big could not get over, and I shoot straight into the wall, and I figured, no way, no way is this not possible. And fortunately, I was wrong. It's just because of the angle that I went about it. If I jump onto it, I can go through it just fine, fortunately. Unlike Big, boosters do not affect Gamma the same way. I think he has more momentum than Big, but he's just as slow, if not slower, than Big is, which is so bizarre. Here, I get caught on the loop, and I fall through it. 
have no idea what happened there. Because if you'll notice, I also don't get stuck on that thing that Big got stuck in either. It doesn't push me out at all. Gamma just goes through it no problem. And I think that might have to do with his running mode. Another thing to note is that at the end of that loop is another ramp that I, again, I feel like I have to jump on it. Otherwise, I just get shot straight forward and I'm not going to, like, make it. But once I do reach the other side, I get, like, stuck in the floor. And fortunately, if I just hold forward, Gamma does sort of, like, phase through the ground. He, like, moves incrementally. So I was like, okay, I just gotta do that until I get to the other side. And that's where it, like, sort of hit me. Like, oh, I'm on a timer. I need to beat the clock. I don't know if this is gonna be possible at all. <laughs> through enough perseverance, of course, I do end up making it to the other side, but it does waste a lot of time for Gamma, but we're coming up to a checkpoint, so hopefully that can save us. The Orca section is not really a problem for Gamma at all. The only part that is more of an issue is the fact that there are booster ramps at the end of the section, so I have to keep jumping on top of them lest I get shot out straight forward like before, and gauging that is really tough when you're going relatively fast. As you can see, it did take me a few attempts to get past this part just because I had to jump right before it, or I would stop right before the ramp and then the orca would get me, so yeah. But once you manage to get to the other side, this is the one part that I think is probably the most challenging because of the way the camera moves, and the camera was a big thing in this run. The way the camera moves after you use a spring doesn't really allow me to see where I'm supposed to land, and because I don't have the jet booster yet, I can't just glide or like float down. I actually have to leap of faith it, almost. <laughs> so it's it's scary, it's losing time, and if I fail, I have to climb all the way to the top again, and that's just losing more time. I would mind less if there wasn't a time limit, but because there is, that's what is sort of freaking me out, and I'm just like, oh no, this is gonna take a long time. If I get there with no time to spare, then that is going to render the whole thing impossible, and I'm just gonna have to do the level again. And honestly, it was pretty interesting seeing the time run out on a lot of these levels, mostly because I don't think I've ever actually seen it run out during normal play in Gamma Stages, just because it's like, the Gamma Stages are pretty simple, all things considered, to the point where you have more than enough time than you'll need in the Gamma Stages, and you can always get more. So I don't think I've ever actually run out of time during a Gamma stage until this playthrough. And even then, I didn't run out of time during the Gamma stages, just in every other stage. So I managed to leap of faith and make it to the top, and I head on over to the next area, which is the first instance of something that I hadn't noticed yet. When you enter a new area, or when you reload a checkpoint after you die or run out of time, nine times out of ten, not every single time, but nine times out of ten, you will respawn in that new area or from that checkpoint with a minute left. Which means that even if I were to, let's say, have 30 seconds left when I reach a checkpoint, but I reload that checkpoint by either dying or losing time, I still spawn in with a minute left. And I, that was a thing I actually didn't know was a thing in Gamma stages, but I think that that's pretty indispensable for this playthrough. A huge difference between Gamma and Big is that Gamma can maintain his momentum where Big's momentum is just practically non-existent. Even though I could have sworn that he was faster than Big, he can keep his momentum going going, unlike Big, who is just a rock. And despite being a robot, Gamma can keep his momentum. He jumps higher when he's in water, which I never noticed, because I think, like, when would you ever notice that? But we're able to get through most of this relatively easily. I struggle a little bit with this, like, section right here, because Gamma's model is pretty tall, and, like, the opening is kind of short, because Sonic's pretty short. Again, this part we reach with Gamma pretty easily, but he can't use the number panel, so I have to use the spring over here, which for a second I thought he wouldn't be able to use, so it kind of freaked me out. I was like, oh no, Oh, don't tell me that. Springs don't affect Gamma very differently from what Sonic Springs are, so we have that going for us. This is a pretty fun death. <laughs> Just uh, going through the loop and dying halfway through and then phasing through the loop. I thought that was pretty funny. But fortunately, we spawn in again with a minute to spare. I mean, despite the fact that we died a couple times or that we ran out of time, if we didn't have the time limitations, Emerald Coast is not the most painful thing to do with Gamma, which, you know, in a way I'm kind of surprised with, but at the same time, I was kind of expecting that to be the case with Big as well, so... Who knows? Something weird happened here, and I think that this is going to be a huge example of things to come. Gamma following paths very, very strangely compared to, like, what the original paths are meant to be. Because a lot of paths 
as they're scripted. And here, it kind of just looks like Cam is freaking out for no reason. But a lot of that has to do with the way he reacts to these automatic pads, which I don't know why it's different at all, but it does cause some issues here and there, especially later down the line. I'm not gonna bore you with all the times the game crashed, just know that it was a lot of them, and after I beat Emerald Coast, it did crash. Fortunately, I'd already gotten the emblem, so it did autosave, so I don't have to do Emerald Coast again, but there were a lot of instances like that, where even if I beat the level, I'd have to do it again because it crashed before it was able to autosave. Something I thought that was interesting here was that the doors opened for Gamma, even though they didn't open for Big, and it's weird because Emerald Coast is not Gamma's first stage. Final Egg is, so I don't know why they opened for Gamma at all. I figured like, oh, maybe they're gonna open for the characters now, and then I try to go to the train station, and the the doors didn't open, so I don't know why the Emerald Coast doors open. That was definitely strange. So we head over to the Mystic Ruins and have our second boss fight with the Egg Hornet, who I figure, you know, like, okay, well, I couldn't fight Chaos, but, you know, the Egg Hornet seems like it could be something I could lock onto, and I was wrong. We're batting 0 for 2 on bosses that Gamma can do, but ironically, this just made it so much more interesting for me that Big can do these boss fights, but Gamma can't. I guess because of the way that they hit things, Gamma doesn't have, like, a close range attack, so to speak, whereas every other character does. You know, Sonic has the homing attack, Tails has his tails, Knuckles has his fist, Amy has the hammer, Big has the fishing rod, so I'm guessing a lot of these bosses are able to be hit differently, and because Gamma is the only one with a long range attack, so to speak, with his laser, he can't lock on to Eggman, which I just thought was just bizarre. And to prove my point, I just, I did it with Amy and there was like no problem, really. But then of course we head on over to Windy Valley after that. It might seem like I'm breezing through this and it's because there's not a whole lot to talk about because Gamma just can't do the things. You'll notice that a Big is following me and it's because with the mod you can also change partner characters. So I figured like, let's, let's change it up a little bit. Let's not have Tails follow us around. Let's have Big follow us around because we did the last challenge with him. My headcanon is that Big is still chasing Gamma for capturing Froggy. So he really wants him back. But Windy, ba <laughs> Windy Valley goes pretty much business as usual, really. Like, I don't think that many of Gamma's physics really affect the way the stage is played. Even without the jetpack, I was able to do the very first half up until the tornado just fine. He follows the wind paths just fine, like he's fast enough to go through that. Which makes me believe like maybe he is faster than Big, but I think the next level you'll see what I mean by, I think that it's more of his momentum than his speed necessarily. Inside the tornado, we have again the numbered panels. Other than the panels, I think Gamma would be able to do the tornado just fine. So I do the panels with Tails just to, you know, show that he can do that, not just Sonic can. And we come across this spring that I can just barely not reach, but I'm convinced that if I could, maybe Gamma would be able to do like 95% of the tornado, just like the numbered panel thing he would not be able to do. And even though I was like pushing forward on the control stick and everything, like I just still was not able to reach that one spring, so I just ended up doing it with Tails as well. Because Gamma can even use this last spring to get out of the tornado, so yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Now we're in the second half of Windy Valley, which really is, again, just business as usual, pretty much. It's just a much slower trek because, again, he's not as fast as Sonic and Tails. I know that I've said this like three or four times already, but I'd argue that he's just as... And you'll see what I mean right now. Like, I'm in his running mode and he still feels like he's going super slow. But fortunately, Gamma can take rockets as well. It's just a really slow trek to get to wherever it is I need to go. He can take loops pretty much just fine. No worries there. But this is another instance of what I'm talking about with the automatic loops. He's for some reason, gets stuck on like the sides or like the railings and that can be pretty dangerous in the sense that if he phases through those railings he will fall off and I have to do that all over again but fortunately he didn't fall off and now that I'm on the island I have to just slowly make my way around it again I can take the wind path so that's that little bit faster than big on this spring he for some reason just doesn't manage to hit it but he's still able to reach the next area just fine so that's good we're making our way to going down and Oh boy. This is a this is a slow one. I, I I preferred to just like jump off and and fall on what I needed to. Unfortunately, I did run out of time right before I was able to reach the emerald. So I did have to kind of do this part again. But I found an even 
faster way to do it, fortunately. This is another instance of an automated section where it's just freaking out and there's like no reason for that to happen. So I jump off here just because I figure like, okay, I'm running out of time. I have half a minute to get there. Hopefully I land on the thing. If not, then fine, I'll just do this again. But I did land like right at the end, fortunately. So with about like, what, 10 seconds to spare, I make it. Windy Valley is pretty much doable as Gamma as well. Like the, the only part is the tornado. That's the only thing that Gamma can't really do. And it's just because of the number panels and the one spring. So we head on over to Casinopolis back in Station Square. I tried to see if I could maybe lock on to the casino button with Gamma. No avail. I did use Sonic's Lightspeed Dash. But we head into Casinopolis and I try to enter the pinball table and... Nothing. <laughs> they, I never... I'm not able to go into it. And I have pretty much no idea why. I Maybe it's because Gamma's model is too big. I, I'm not sure. Because the thing is, Big's able to go inside. And it's not like Big is meant to go into Casinopolis, I don't think. So I don't really understand why Gamma's not able to. I even tried to go into the Knight's card table as well, but they function pretty much the same. So I really don't understand why I'm not able to do this. Something I didn't really realize was that when I was restarting the stages, I no longer had three minutes left. I only had one. And that's just because... Uh, that's how the checkpoint system works for Gamma. Uh, once again, once you go into the pinball table proper, much like Big, who doesn't have a ball rolling animation in this game, uh, you can just walk around with Gamma. And I tried exploiting the same thing I did with Big, but it wasn't working the same way, unfortunately. So I had to find a different mean to get 400 rings. You're able to go into the slot machine portion of the pinball table, but once you do, you get stuck. There is nothing else you can do. You are just stuck there until you die, time runs out, you restart, whatever. Once you do restart though, you'd restart directly on the pinball table, and now I have two minutes again. Again, for some, I have no idea how this works. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm trying to do the thing that I did with Big, which is like stay in this one spot over here and like just get a bunch of rings by standing there. And while I managed to get a few, it is nowhere near as plentiful as Big's was. Like with Big, I could just stand there. With Gamma, I kind of have to finagle my way around until I hit like the exact spot where I start to get rings. And I really, I just don't know where that is. I could never determine where it was where I could just get a bunch of rings. After a little bit, I abandoned that idea because I figured, okay, this is not gonna work. So I tried going into one of the tubes that takes me to like another part of the level and yeah, Gamma can go through it but once he reaches the other part of the level I once again get stuck. I can use my laser, theoretically there's nothing I can really lock onto, unfortunately, while I'm there, so that's another reset. I was trying to go into the other one, but then I realized, hey, I'm getting coins by standing on this part of the table, and this is where I learned about a mechanic of the pinball table that I didn't really know about before, which is like these three little bars with three dots in them. If you manage to hit all three, you get like 10 coins each time, and it makes it easier with Gamma because all I have to do is jump. Like when you hit the paddles, it changes the position of which bar is lit up, but you you have to have them all lit up to get those rings. Uh, so what I could do with Gamma is just jump over them repeatedly. So it's not as quick as Big's method, but it is like an easier way to get a bunch of rings on the pinball table compared to like the normal method. Unfortunately, I was running a little bit low on time, so I guess I could have reached 400 rings, but there was no way I could have lost both pinballs in time to get where I needed to. So I had to take that L and immediately book it back there once I restarted the pinball table so that I could get there with as much time as possible. With only half a minute to spare, I do book it to lose both the pinballs. Once I respawn back into the casino proper, I have a minute left. Like I said, when you respawn into different areas of a level, sometimes your timer will reset for some reason. I really don't understand why that is, but it was good for me because that just gave me more time to get to the end. And again, aside from not being able to access the pinball table on your own, Casinopolis is possible with Gamma. I just don't know why he can't can't load into the pinball table by himself. I do need to have another character do that for me. But after that, we head on over to Ice Cap, which I'm not going to lie, right off the bat was one of my biggest frustrations. It, not only was it one of my biggest frustrations, it was the start of my frustrations with this run. And you'll see why in just a little bit. It, it largely has to do with the timer. When we lock onto a lot of these enemies in this stage, you can lock onto them, but despite the fact that you sort of shoot the laser at them, because of the way their animation 
animation works. I don't really know what it is, but they don't die right away. They just like squish into like two dimensions, which they normally do when you hit them as Sonic, but they die immediately afterward. It's like, it's like almost a squash and stretch, but with Gamma, they just squash, you know, they don't stretch. <laughs> they don't stretch back out into death. So they're just stuck in that for a while until which point the game finally decides like, okay, you can shoot them now. I, I don't know why that is. A lot of the geometry in the level is really difficult to navigate as Gamma, I'd say, especially like things that are a bit more curved. That first part was not a huge deal. It's this cavern part that was just super annoying because navigating it in terms of platforms was way more simple with Gamma than it was with Big, but this ramp right here, this little ramp, which uh, for all intents and purposes, I am convinced is possible. I know for a fact, and, and we'll come back to this later with the jetpack, because I did want to check out like what was possible with the jetpack and what wasn't, particularly in this level. But I am convinced that even without the jetpack, the jetpack, you are able to clear that jump no problem. Much like Big, and I think most characters, Gamma can't grab onto the icicles that Sonic and Tails can. I don't even know if Tails can grab onto them, it might just be Sonic who can grab onto those, but Gamma can't, so that was one problem. And the curve, or the ramp, is designed in such a way that you go up to grab hold of the icicle, and I am desperately, desperately trying to make this jump with just the momentum alone. Like, maybe go at it on a different angle, go on it on a different part of the curve. But no matter what I did, his normal jump is not enough to reach it on his own. You would think that just by standing on this little platform here and jumping that I'd be able to do it. But frustratingly, the icicles stop you at every point. You can't grab onto them, but they do have geometry applied to them. So they will stop you. They're still like solid objects that can stop you in your tracks. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, to the side, there are actual spikes as opposed to icicles. So everything about that part is frustrating to me because much like with the big <laughs> playthrough, I am convinced you can do it. I'm convinced that it's possible. There was just nothing I did that helped. I even switched to free camera so that the camera was a little bit more cooperative with me. That didn't really help. <laughs> no matter what I did, I just could not get over that part. But I know you can. I know you can without the jetpack. I just never was able to. So even assuming that you do somehow make it over over there on your own. Now you have this part, which is running over the icicle pack or like the, the ice cubes, whatever. So I do that normally. I figure like, oh, he can do that just fine. And then I fall through the goddamn thing. I was livid. And this, this right here, this clip right here, I think perfectly exemplifies my time in this part of Ice Cap. Big will not stop goddamn jumping because he's my partner, so he wants to catch up with me, but he's not tail, so he can't fly. So he just constantly keeps jumping as most as he can. And I, I I just let myself die because there's nothing I can do. There's just nothing. So I have to constantly be hearing big jump while I can't do something that should be super easy. I get over to the other checkpoint, so finally I don't have to deal with that anymore. Unfortunately, then comes this part, which is the numbered panels, which is the first thing that I'm convinced you can't do regardless, so I do have to do that with another character. And finally I proceed to the snowboarding section, which I thought would be, you know, pretty fine. And then as soon as I broke the wooden fence, Gamma just froze. I was fortunately able to switch to another character, so that's good. And it didn't freeze on me the way it did for Big. It froze for me in a kind of a different way. Gamma just sort of doesn't jump off the thing until the avalanche catches up with you. <laughs> And then, like, it sort of pushes you off and forces you off that cutscene area, I guess. And again, the avalanche doesn't hurt you. It can't catch up to you. But, oh my, this is where I, this is where I noticed it. This is where I first realized, like, oh wow, Gamma's really slow. Like, really slow. Even his running animation is, oh boy, it's slow. <laughs> At some point I figure like, okay, I'll do what I did with Big and just, you know, do multiple jumps. That'll probably propel me forward more and, eh, barely. I was able to get past the avalanche fall, but by that point I had like five seconds left, so there was really not much I could do. And every time I respawn, like I said, I have a minute left. And given Gamma speed, and even, I think even regardless of Gamma speed, I'm convinced that there's no way I can do this in time. W without the time limit, I'd be able to make it just fine. But because I'm held back by a time limit, I don't think that this part is possible. And again, it doesn't really help that the camera or the controls or whatever have the snowboarding controls, which do affect Gamma. Like right now, it looks like I'm curving side to side for no reason and it's because I can't help myself. The game is just doing that automatically because it assumes I'm on a snowboard during that part, even when I'm not. A thing that I noticed was kind of faster was trying to like let myself 
fall by jumping because the level is sort of on an incline and it helps a little bit. I got a little further into the level, but again, I, I didn't even get halfway through when I ran out of time, so I'm just convinced that this part of Ice Cap is impossible to do with Gamma, at least given the stipulation of time. If you didn't have a time limit, this would be doable no problem. So of course after that we have the Knuckles fight, which I figure, you know, like, okay, well there's a Gamma fight between Gamma and Sonic in his story, so we should be able to do this just fine. And for some reason, no you cannot, you cannot lock onto Knuckles for God knows what reason. I, no matter what I did, I could not lock onto Knuckles even though there is a fight that is exactly like this in Gamma's story. I don't understand. But regardless, I figured, okay, this is impossible. Let's just do a Knuckles on Knuckles fight. So after that, we have the Chaos 4 fight, which is the one in the Mystic Ruins underwater. Once again, I can't lock onto him. I have still no idea why, but there was something I could lock onto in the water, and I think it's one of the lily pads, and I don't know why, or even if it was the lily pad that I was locking onto, I have no earthly idea what it was that I was locking onto, but it didn't make a difference. I couldn't hurt Chaos, so I just resolved to do it with Amy, who has an interesting time dealing with Chaos, I think. Like, I kind of wish that Amy was given more to do in her story because she's pretty capable, if I'm being perfectly honest. After that, we have Sky Chase Act 1, which, as I mentioned in the big video, nothing changes. You cannot change the model, which I'm convinced is one single model that has a tornado, Tails, and Sonic on it. I feel like that's just one model, and you can't just change that. You can't just change Sonic to Gamma or Tails to Gamma. Like, they're all part of the same model, so you can't do that. So it's largely unchanged. After that part, we meet up with Amy, and we have Twinkle Park. Once more, I was just absolutely absolutely astonished to find out that I cannot lock on to the driving monkeys. How? Why can I not lock on to them? Like, why can I not lock on to the driving kikis? That makes absolutely no sense why I can't do that. I'm pretty sure I can hit them with anyone else but Gamma, and I don't understand why. So the only thing I could do was blow up one of the cars with another character and then switch to Gamma and then take control of the car there, which I could do. I just don't know why I couldn't shoot any of them. And I don't think I ever actually did Twinkle Circuit with Gamma because I don't remember him like just sitting on top of the car like this. But I guess it makes the most amount of sense. So I go on the roller coaster with Gamma into Twinkle Park proper. I did crash again, so I had to go in as Sonic. But once I reach this part of the stage where I actually go into the controllable part of Gamma, I must have accidentally hit a death plane or clipped out of bounds or something because I died for some reason. So I just, I had to do the, the roller cart section again, uh, which is where I realized that Gamma, much like Big, can't go on the roller coaster. You have to momentarily switch to Sonic to do that. I guess because he's the only character that's coded to do that. I just find it funny that every other character can still ride the roller coaster regardless. Again, much like Big, if you go into the bowling section, you have more control than you would of Sonic, which gives you a bunch of rings. Water sections are way easier to get over with Gamma just because, like, he floats on top of them. This is a part that I didn't understand at all and freaked me out, which was the merry-go-round section. When Gamma was standing on the floor, the floor's geometry would move, and I've never seen that before. I don't know why that triggers at all, but I didn't want to risk dying, so I, like, I just, I jumped as many times as I could so I didn't die. And I'm being perfectly honest, most of Twinkle Park is just business as usual. There's nothing that I think is too game-breaking or impossible for Gamma. There are certain jumps that he can't make compared to what Sonic would be able to do. Not as bad as Big, though. Our biggest rival really is just the time limit, which we can reset once we get to a checkpoint, so it's not something that I'm too nervous about. Just because, like, if I do run out of time or if I die somewhere, I respawn with another minute left, so that shifts it from impossible to absolutely possible, regardless of if I have any enemies to blow up or not. We take the final few springs, and again, I'd say that it's mostly possible. There are just those instances here and there, like at the beginning, where I had to, you know, destroy one of the driving monkeys with another character as opposed to Gamma and switching to Sonic for the roller coaster. Other than that, totally doable. I just really don't understand why he can't destroy one of the driving Kikis. I don't get it. Next up, we have Speed Highway, which since we could do as big, I felt completely comfortable for Gamma. I was like, okay, well, Gamma's gonna be able to do this. I'm pretty sure no problem. And... Ah... Uh... 
Gamma gets caught up on a lot of things, like on a lot of geometry compared to other characters. Especially when he goes into his running mode, he gets stuck a lot on like little bits of geometry that would otherwise not be an issue. Much like with Big, Speed Highway is a bit of a misnomer with Gamma, just because you're not really going fast at all. The first part of Gamma's speed highway is not too bad, but then I came across this, which I absolutely do not understand. You take these booster pads and you clip through the floor before getting to the construction thing that sends you to the higher part of the level, and you just you just die. Like, there's nothing you can do. You just, you either, you go too fast, you clip through the, I don't really know what it is, but you just die and you have to do all this all over again. What especially annoyed me was that it happened a couple of times. Like, I've tried my best to avoid those boosters, but I knew that I needed them to get to the other part of the level, so I, I had to jump at them at the exact correct point to, you know, avoid clipping through the floor, and... That wasn't easy, especially when you have to do large swaths of the level again, and Gamma's not very fast. But I'm able to do it. Gamma, again, can grab onto the helicopter, which I guess means everyone can, which I think is just super funny and strange. Similarly to Big, I had an issue with this part of the rocket, which kind of scared me because I figured like, oh no, is this something Gamma can't do? And I tried it again a second time, and I was able to do it no problem, so I really don't know what the issue there is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Speaking of weird things in comparisons to Big and Gamma, Big can actually go through this, like, loop, and Gamma can't, because despite retaining more momentum, for some reason the automated script doesn't work there for Gamma, and I don't know why? He just falls off. But fortunately there is a platform on the bottom which leads to, like, a conveyor belt, which leads to another path that, if Again, I take the booster pads, I skyrocket through the side of the rail, through the geometry, and fall to my death. And again, happened a couple of times, which really annoyed me, because it meant that I had to be more careful. And that's not, being more careful isn't the part that bothers me. The part that bothers me is having to redo parts of the level, which take a long time to get to, just to be able to try something else, only to fail. Again, another part with booster pads, where I clip through the bottom and die. Meaning that again, I have to do this part all over again, be careful. It's just super annoying when things like that happen and you can't possibly foresee them happening because you don't think like, oh, if I do this, I'm gonna clip through the floor. It just happens. Here we have going down, which is similar to Big and Gamma. I like got a little bit away from the building and I started to see it despawn. I'm like, this is probably not a great idea. Let me start heading back toward the building so that I can ensure that I land where I need to. And similarly to Big, the camera starts kind of freaking out a little bit, not really following the character anymore. So I just have to guesstimate what movements I have to make in order to keep progressing. We head into the at dawn section, which I was very afraid would crash on me because I'd be heading into a different part of the stage and and not only that, but I now only have a minute left and I don't know if I'll be able to make it in time with just Gamma. The police cars have a similar thing where they do the squash and stretch and don't die right away, so there's, their hitbox is still active. I can still get hit by them, and that's annoying. But unlike Big, Gamma can use springs somewhat normally and take shortcuts, so that sort of negates the time loss or like the counter. Unlike Big, Gamma has like no forward momentum at all for some reason, so I couldn't use the fountain. I had to use the springs, which fortunately, I could use, meaning that Speed Highway is 100% doable as Gamma. It is just surprisingly more of a hassle than it is with Big. I know that I'm comparing this video a lot to the Big challenge, but it's just, it astonishes me that this is in a lot of ways more difficult with Gamma than it is with Big. And also, I just, I just noticed this. I got a huge enemy score boost as Gamma, and I don't, I don't know why that is. So next up, we have Red Mountain, which I was a little afraid of because I figured, oh, this should be easier than with Big. But then again, that's what I thought for a lot of stages, so I was kind of afraid that it would be impossible or that it would be like super frustrating and annoying and not really you know a lot of it consists of springs rockets things that we know that gamma can use and that he uses pretty similarly to sonic he also doesn't drop as much of a rock as big does so that's another advantage we have to like accurately falling on certain platforms this part here i don't have a helming attack to get to the other side but fortunately if you do fall it's sort of like a half pipe and there's a booster pad on the bottom which is able to let gamma move forward so again really no issue i think the first half if not all of Red Mountain as Gamma, is really not super interesting in the sense that it's really just as if you were doing it
doing it with Sonic, you just have a laser instead of a homing attack, so not a whole lot changes. There's not much that the game demands of you in terms of using the homing attack anyway, so the first part is really pretty normal. Something that especially I think helps Gamma in Sonic's Red Mountain, the second half, is the fact that he can jump really well. We don't have the homing attack, or we don't have like an air dash, but we don't really need one, fortunately, and that's that was something that kind of surprised me, was that we don't really need any of that in order to finish this level, because again, it's very business as usual. Uh, there's a part where we could use a light suit dash, but there's an alternate path where you don't need to have it in order to advance. So we take that much in the same way as we did with Big. Unlike Big, however, this part with like this ramp right here, I was able to get through no problem. In fact, someone actually on Twitter sent me a video of them completing that part as big, so we can actually rule out that as being impossible as big because he can do it. And I'm glad that I was so stubborn enough to the point where I was like, hey, I really think you can do this, so go for it. And someone actually did, and that's awesome. But yeah, you go about Red Mountain just the same you would a Sonic, just again, with a laser instead of a homing attack. Not a difficult level at all. It's 100% doable. In fact, it might be the first, I'm trying to think if it's the first stage Stage that we never had to change to another character even for a second for. Well, no, Emerald Coast. Then, of course, we have Sky Chase 2. Again, nothing different. Gonna have to go through this again with Tails. Whatever. And now, what I can confirm is my least favorite stage, and this isn't even the worst part of it. This, already, Big made me sort of frustrated with Sky Deck, because I was like, okay, this is, this sucks, this is dumb, but I figured he wouldn't be able to do this, that's fine. Gamma, for, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that Gamma can't do this. Like, yeah, okay, he can't grab onto the first thing, but for the love of God, even Big can, like, land on the thing if he gets propelled enough forward. I didn't even know that. If you, like, go about it correctly, and maybe it's because of the computer, I don't know, but, like, he can land on the, like, little thing at the bottom. Gamma can't. Gamma cannot for any reason whatsoever. And I figured, okay, because this was a thing with Big too. I can't climb these ladders. I don't know why. They're coded probably differently than the other ladders. Who knows? But then I would later find out during Tails' story, I think it was during Tails' story, that you can climb the ladders. They're just super finicky. Super friggin' finicky that they are. Unlike Red Mountain, there are parts that require you to use the homing attack, so that makes this even less possible. Oh, as, as a matter of fact, never mind. This is where I found out that I could use Gamma to climb the ladders. Because Big can too, but I just find it insane that, like, maybe because the hitbox for the ladders is very small, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think I accidentally discovered that Gamma could use the ladders. It's just, again, it's super finicky. And no matter how I tried to go about this as Gamma, his forward momentum was just not enough that I could reach the other side of the platform in order to continue. It would be a lot easier if I did have the jet booster, but I don't have that yet, is the thing. I'm not even gonna lie, just seeing this footage back is annoying me. <laughs> and then when you jump on these pillars, sometimes you get like pushed up. I don't know why, but I thought like maybe I can use that to my advantage and not really. Honestly, I'd gotten so annoyed with the stage that I totally even forgot about the time limit. So by the time I like got to this second part of the stage, this is where, oh God, <laughs> even just looking back at it, it's, it's so annoying to look at. I got stuck on this part right here for no friggin reason. No reason whatsoever, because the wind is pushing me back, and it's something you would never even notice if you were playing with Sonic. But no, because you're playing with Gamma, you get stuck here, and his jump isn't great, so you struggle to get back up. It's not impossible to get back up, it's just annoying to. But at that point, you're fighting against the time limit, and you need to get to the next checkpoint as soon as possible, but then everything is shooting at you, and you can't shoot these cannons either. And then, I forgot about this part! This part sucks! Okay, so there's this ramp that, that lets you get to the next part of the level that has a spring at the top of it, which with any other character, literally any other character, you would be able to get up just fine, no problem. With Gamma for some stupid reason, I guess his model, I, have no, I don't even know, because his model's not that big. Like, come on, I think big is wider than he is, and he gets like pushed off the thing, so it, th this is what I'm saying when I say that, like, it annoyed me more than Big's challenge did, because with Big, at least, I understood, like, okay, it's because his model is too large, whatever. I already expected that this would be annoying as it is. With Gamma, I figured this is gonna be fun, because I can shoot most things, and it's gonna be great, and then uh, you find out that you can shoot way less things than what makes sense, and you have a stupid time limit, and the geometry doesn't work half the time, and the 
stupid winds are blowing you away, meaning that you have to walk back up there. I am doing this as carefully as humanly possible. And it was only because, I, I think that this is how I made it work. It was because the wind was active that it allowed me to push. And then I died and I still got the checkpoint. So thank God for that. Because I really did not want to do that again. This part is, I think, definitely more of a hassle as big. I think the thing that makes it easier to do with Gallant is that I have a higher jump than Big does. So that made this a lot less stressworthy. But because I knew that I could do it with Big, I think that I was already predisposed to not feel tension. Because I was like, okay, if I can do it with Big, I can most likely do it with Gamma. But as we've learned, that is not a rule. <laughs> that is... That is definitely not a rule. Here, I was desperately trying to hit the big cannon, but time was running out, and the big cannon just did not want to cooperate with me at all. So I managed to destroy the thing while my counter reached zero. Guess what happened? Game crashed. Because what else is new? On my second time around, I managed to get there just fine. No problem. Uh, and now we're on to the last part of Sonic's Sky Deck, which... I suppose is not the worst. Like, I, honestly, I'm surprised that this was the one part that was, like, not as bad as the rest of the level, in a way. Again, even though this spring is meant to make you grab onto the ladder immediately, the hitbox is so small that Gamma just cannot grab onto it no matter what I do. Even though I know he can use ladders, I've seen him do it. Fortunately, they add another checkpoint right there so that if you somehow fall off, you can just reload from there, which is great as Gamma because my time was already running out. This next part was honestly a little easier with Gamma than it was with Big, just because I felt more confident in my jumps. But then I get stuck on this part, which I think Big did too, so I have to like hug the side of the rail and it looked like I'm doing a BLJ. But uh, eventually that manages to get me up. So this next part is not doable as Gamma for reasons I explained in the big challenge, which is that I can't grab onto the monkey bars, the springs can only send me so far, and most of them will send me into monkey bars, and since I can't grab onto those, you would think that that's not possible, but during my time with Big, there was something that I tried that didn't work out with Big, but that fortunately did work out as Gamma, which is once I get to this part of the stage and the, the ship like tilts to the side and like gravity changes or whatever, if I go to a certain part of the side and then free fall onto this part of the platform, which you're meant to go to anyway, you can somehow manage to like get gravity to normalize and you can finish the stage that way. And I was really hoping that would work. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that most of the stage is not doable as Gamma, but it made me happy to know that at least I wasn't crazy and that was something I could do, you know. Again, I tried to have a Gamma on Gamma fight, and not only did it not work because I couldn't lock onto him for whatever reason, even though he is not only a character but another robot, the minute he locked onto me and tried to shoot at me, the game crashed. I, I don't know why. I, I honestly don't know why. Went about it with Amy because I figured Amy doesn't get to fight Gamma. Let's have her beat up her friend, take my frustrations out on that. But now, since I had unlocked Gamma, I figured, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do Gamma Story. Because something that I saw a lot of you asking during the big challenge was, how would have a lot of Sonic stages fared if I had had most of Big's power-ups? Namely, the Life Belt, which lets you float in water. And that was something I didn't really consider when doing. Like, I figured maybe not much would change, but I didn't really try it out. So I figured, you know what? Just to make things easier for me, I really need that Jet Booster. His Vulcan Cannon power-up, that's like, whatever, who cares, but like, the jet booster and gliding is gonna help immensely, so I would much rather have that right now. So there's not really much to talk about during Gamma's story, because, I mean, it's Gamma, and it almost felt like a godsend just because it was, oh boy, so much more fun to do. <laughs> For fun, I decided to check out, like, if Gamma could actually float above the train section that I did with Big, where he was swimming, and I was surprised to find out that he can. I actually didn't know that. I don't think it's faster to do it that way, who knows, but I did manage to do the whole thing as Gamma, so I thought that that was an interesting thing for me to learn, personally. Another interesting thing that happened during Gamma's story was during his final boss. I think it had something to do with the fact that I changed characters mid-fight, because the camera was now focused on Gamma as a opposed to beta, and after a given time, he just stood there. He didn't attack me anymore. And I could lock onto him, but he would not be able to get hit, and I don't really know why that is. I could just move him around the map as much as I wanted to, uh, until I got him out of bounds, and then, like, he reacted again, like, he started attacking me, but then he got stuck again in, like, his shield 
formation thing, and then I like I just couldn't touch him at all. So simply resetting the fight fixed that. So after that, I went back to do Sonic's Ice Cap to see like what would change or if it would be more possible to do as Gamma. And in a way, yeah, like it's definitely faster to do because I could skip the very first part of it. This is something you can technically do with Sonic as well. But if you go to this little like mountain here and then you spin dash over to this rocket or to the other opening, you can just skip the first section immediately. That is done a lot easier with Gamma's jet booster though. Unfortunately, the jet booster did not really help for this section, at least not immediately. I figured like, this is stupid. This is garbage. Are you kidding me? How is the jet booster not helping with this part? You're not about to tell me that this part is not doable with Gamma at all, but of course it is. I just needed to get to a higher point. I was just getting frustrated because the geometry was just messing me up so bad. It was pushing me out of platforms I wanted to jump on. It was just, oh, it was hell. <laughs> and then something weird started happening with this loop. Like the automated section would like start and stop and start and stop stop and uh, it was just it was a uh, it was a thing it was a thing that happened that was not fun at all and for some reason this time around when I got to the snowboarding section it actually did freeze the same way it did with big and I don't I don't understand why it didn't the first time or why it did now I really don't know this time around I tried to make it with two minutes as opposed to just one minute and use the jet boost to see if there was any possible way that that would be faster to navigate and Kind of? Like, it looks like it's going faster, but I don't think it's really doing much to begin with. Like, right now, I feel like I'm still on the first section of it. I'm just going high. I'm not really going far. Right now, I'm just tapping the boost button in order to continue my forward momentum, which is relatively fast because I'm practically falling as opposed to actually, like, moving forward and that helps a little bit but then i realized like oh wow i am nowhere near like to the half of this section so there's no way i'm making it in time no way at all and by the time my time ran out and then i respawned i just had a minute left and i was like okay well i know for a fact i can't do that so whatever let's just keep going i'll take the l there like maybe it's possible if i do an out of bounds thing maybe it's not i don't know I don't care anymore. So next up is Chaos 6, and if we haven't been able to hit Chaos 0 through 4, I doubt this is possible, and what do you friggin' know? Like, there's nothing I can do about that because I can't even hit the stupid Freezy Eggs. Like, I can't even do that! I can't jump on them, I can't lock onto them, I hit something there, what did I hit? God knows! I don't know! I have no idea! So naturally, guess what? I decided to do this with Amy, and oh, look at that. She can do this no problem. Wow, a freaking 12-year-old hedgehog is more capable than a robot built by a 300 IQ scientist. And see, here's the kicker with this fight. Amy can't grab the freezy eggs. She has to hit them while chaos is near them. So it's like, yeah, it's not the intended way, but at least it's a way. Gamma can't even do that. But that leads us into what is possibly one of my least favorite stages in Sonic adventure normally, which is Lost World. Not that I don't find the stage interesting, it's just that, especially with the big challenge, it put a really sour taste in my mouth, and it's not something that I necessarily look forward to when I play this game, but who knows, with Gamma and his jet booster, we'll see how we fare here. We've done a lot of things so far that have really, really annoyed me, so let's just see how this goes. Already one thing that made me feel like, hey, this is kind of fun, was this fire section with this tunnel and like the rising and lowering fire fire pillars or whatever. I could just like kind of cheese that by using the booster. So already we're getting some mileage out of the booster, which I'm thankful for. The rock snake section I thought was going to be interesting because it's water and I figured like, oh, well, Gamma can float on top of water. We're seeing it right now. So this should be like easy as pie. This should be super easy. What I failed to realize was that I think that only applies if there's not a death plane underneath it because otherwise I'll just fall right through that. If it's water you're meant to go in as any other character, then Gamma will float on top of it. If it's water that has a death plane in it, Gamma will go straight through it. So unfortunately, this was a thing I had to do pretty much legit, uh, which sucks because I figured it was going to be something that's really cool and kind of wasn't. I mean, not that there's anything that's not necessarily cool about it. You know, I could still cheese my way by using the jet booster. It just wasn't as cool or as effective as I thought it would be. This is another instance of what I was talking about in that like Gamma, for some reason, always bumps into level geometry. There's a little ridge at the center of this opening and that just makes me go insane and fall to my death like it's 
So dumb. So dumb. I practically blast through this dark section just because, you know, booster pack and I'm already sort of annoyed. But then I make a discovery. In, in my frustration, I accidentally fell off the side and realized that for some reason, even though you're supposed to die in this water, Gamma actually does float on it. So I guess that makes my theory that I said earlier irrelevant. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what works and what doesn't. I really don't. This section right here where you're going down the water, I thought was really cool because the camera freaks out and puts you in like a first person mode for some reason. It's almost as if you're inside the water slide, which I think is pretty cool. But then something else weird happened when I came out of it. I clipped out of bounds, but fortunately because I had the jet booster, I could get back in bounds. And the camera, the camera is just, ugh, the camera is the death of me, dude. It's the worst. So something weird happened here during the giant cheese ball section. The camera, I guess, or something pushed me down and I figured like, okay, well, whatever, it's fine. Hopefully I can make it to a, the other checkpoint before time runs out, whatever. Unfortunately, I wasn't going fast enough for the ramp to send me to the other part of the section. But then when I tried it again, there was no problem. And I think it might've been because of where I jumped, maybe? I, I have no idea. Doing that though, I was able to go through the ceiling because there's no collision on the ceiling. So that's fun. And I was getting kind of spooked because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it in time. Oh, this sucks. Uh, my time is running out. And then I went through the wall accidentally and got even more freaked out just because I figured like, did I just lock myself in here? And I was just facing the wrong way, it turns out. So all good there. So this was a part of the level that I was convinced I would not be able to do and... <sighs> The reason for it was because it took me quite a bit of time to actually get through it. Once I reached the switch to make the walls walkable, I was able to go up there just fine. But when I reached the second part where that's supposed to happen, I couldn't grab onto the wall at all. And I have no idea why that was until I dropped back down and realized like, oh, it might have something to do with Gamma being in a different mode. Like, because when you're on the bottom, he's in his on top of water mode. So like he's, he's hovering above the water so I think his model changes to the point where he can finagle his way onto the wall. But if he's in his normal walking mode, he can't do that. And that's pretty annoying. It makes this a lot more difficult than it needs to be. I was able to jet boost to the other side, but then I come to the port where Sonic needs to do his light speed dash, and that's way too far away than what I can jet boost and glide. So I was starting to think that, no, I'm probably not going to be able to do this. But being the stubborn jerk that I am, I figured, you know what? Maybe there's an exploit I can use. Maybe there's a cliff I can jump off of. Who knows? Let's try it out. And I managed to realize you know, through a little bit of trial and error and annoying enemies that kept hitting me and annoying spikes that kept hitting me, I can actually bypass the tiles, the colored tiles, and keep running up the wall through my momentum, which is why I realized like, oh, he probably has better momentum than Big does. So I figured I have to use that to my advantage. How am I going to do it? I don't know. <laughs> that was until I realized like, oh, this wall, I can use this wall right here, get a running start from the bottom and then land on the adjacent wall. And then from that wall, I can just jet boost down to where I need to, which took a lot of trial and error, like a lot of it. But eventually I was able to do it. I died a bunch of times, but then I realized like, oh, I got a checkpoint where I needed to be. So I just floated down and finished the level. So all in all, Gamma can do Lost World pretty much no problem. I don't think I had to change characters a single time. I did want once, but because I thought that I needed to, it turns out I didn't need to because I clipped through the geometry and I was just facing the wrong way. But you can do Sonic's Lost World with just Gamma. And I think that that's pretty interesting. One of the more interesting levels of this run. But that brings us from one of the most interesting stages to one of the most annoying for a multitude of reasons. Final Egg isn't as bad at first glance. One of the really interesting things that I found out was you can actually shoot the little claw things that come down to grab you. Of all things, things, of all things you can shoot, why is that one of them? I would not care if you couldn't shoot those. But now that I think about that, the fact that you can just kind of annoys me even more because it's, there's so many things you can't shoot. And that is such a meaningless thing that I don't think you can even destroy as Sonic and you can destroy it as Gamma. The, uh, whatever. It's, it's whatever. The first part of Sonic's Final Egg is pretty harmless. It's not very annoying at all. You can get through it just fine. Gamma's fast enough to get through it, no problem. We reach the second section, which again, because we have the jetpack, doesn't really mean a whole lot. I go into this tunnel here and Gamma starts 
freaking out. And at that point, I'm kind of finding it funny just because it's like, okay, I, I really need something to just lighten the mood of the sour, like, crash after crash after crash. But after a while, I was like, okay, you're getting stuck on walls way too much. This went from being fun to being something else that's kind of annoying me. <laughs> Gamma kept getting stuck on walls and, like, almost going through the geometry. And it was just so stressful and annoying because there's no reason for that. He should just go through the things normally. I don't understand. So we reach what's effectively, like, the final part of Final Egg, the third part, and as I'm trying to get onto this ladder, the game just crashes for who honestly knows at this point. I have no clue why it crashed on me that time. I didn't do anything. I didn't shoot anything because I knew it was going to probably crash. I didn't jump on any of those crab things. It just crashed on me. And I was so annoyed because that means I had to do Final Egg all over again. So I finally get back to where I was. Didn't crash this time. I'm going up the ladder. Slow. Slow. So slow. Fortunately, I'm able to grab a checkpoint, so uh, everything's all good there. Until, of course, I reached this part, where for some reason, again, the game crashed. And I know, I know, I said I wasn't going to mention every single time the game crashed, but I haven't been. I swear I haven't been. It's just that these moments are so annoying because I don't understand why they crashed. I boosted from a boost pad onto a spring. I didn't shoot anything. I didn't press any button. I was just playing the game and it crashed crashed and now I gotta do final egg again. And you know what the worst part of it all is? Like the worst part is that I managed to reach those parts again. The parts where the game crashed and they don't crash again. For some reason, the game just doesn't crash. And I would understand it if it was a more consistent thing, but it, it doesn't. I, I don't, I don't understand why sometimes it crashes and other times it doesn't. So I get past that part. I'm nearing the end of the stage. I go down this little section here with the spike balls. And because I'm able to hover, I get onto this little platform without having to use the spring. I fall down this path right here, you know, struggling just a teensy little bit. Go through this door and crash, crash again. That time, I don't know if it's because I locked onto something, but something I did notice was that it happened every time I was near a room with the crab things, but I wasn't interacting with them at all, so I don't, I, I don't understand. So this is like the brilliant time I'm doing Final Egg, and finally I'm able to get where I was before. But would it be that easy? No, of course it wouldn't be that easy, because why would it be? It's Final Egg, it's Sonic as Gamma, why would this be easy ever at all? So there's this part right here, near the end. All you have to do is jump over, or you have to light speed dash, one of the two, I don't remember which one it is. But Gamma's hover does not manage to reach. You have to light speed dash toward the end, but Gamma doesn't have a light speed dash, meaning he has to hover there. But his hover does not send you far enough to get there. So is it possible to do? Yes. Why? Because there's a little, a, a teensy, teensy little platform right there. A so small one that why does it even bother having collision? But thank goodness it does because it allows me to step on there as Gamma. But would it be that easy? No, because it's super small and there's this other platform which you can't just normally jump off of. So this was, Final Egg was just misery. It was just full of misery. I, I just wanted, I just wanted sweet release from Final Egg. I just, I didn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I was so done. I was so done. I just wanted to be done with this. But finally, a light at the end of the tunnel. After like 20 minutes of trying, I was finally able to land on it, fidget my way toward a place or a point in the structure that I was comfortable enough jumping off of and gliding toward. And I finally finished the stage. Is it possible? I guess in the most technical sense of the word, final egg is possible to do as Gamma, but oh my God, was it torture to do. But that leads us into Sonic's final boss, which I figured, you know what? Why would, why would this be possible? Of course it's not gonna be possible. It's the Egg Viper, but you know what? I held out just on a little bit of hope. I held on on a little bit of hope that maybe, you know what, maybe it is possible. And then when Eggman reared his ugly head in, I was able to lock onto him. Why? I don't know. I have no idea why I'm able to lock onto the Egg Viper compared to every other boss. I don't know. But then something weird started to happen. I noticed that I could like infinitely hover in the air and I would keep gaining height, which I thought was really, really funny. I was like, dude, this is great. I'm cheesing this boss. This is fantastic. This is retribution practically for Final Egg. Until I let go of the jump button. I let go of the hover button and realized, oh no, I'm still 
hovering. But Eggman kept getting hit. So I'm like, oh, that's fine. I don't care then. Eggman's getting hit and I'm in no danger because I can keep hovering infinitely even though I'm not even pressing the button and I'm automatically shooting him too. So that's weird. Okay, whatever. But whatever, he's getting hit. That's fine. It's all fun and good. This is awesome. This is amazing. I'm like stuck on the ceiling. I'm hitting him, whatever, you know, like it's, it's all good. And then... It stopped being fun during the last few hits where I couldn't see him anymore. My shots were taking way too long to reach him, meaning that he probably wasn't even active anymore, so I couldn't hurt him. And I remembered that my time was counting down. So I'm like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. Let me down, let me down. And sometimes it would let me down, but other times, no matter what I did, it just would not let me down. And I, it just forced me to go all the way back up and I couldn't lock onto him. And I have a theory as to what's happening here too. Too, I think that maybe the Egg Viper is indirectly controlling Gamma as well, which is incredibly bizarre. Because whenever he would shoot, like, his laser, Gamma would shoot his laser. And whenever he would, like, fly up, I would keep jumping in the air, so I get the feeling maybe the Egg Viper's controlling Gamma indirectly. I'm not 100% on that though. It went from fun to not being fun anymore to straight up annoying during the last hit because no matter what I did, I couldn't touch him. I just straight up could not touch him and I don't know why. All I wanted to do was finish this fight, especially because my time was running out. I was just like, I want this to be over. I want this to be done. I've had my fun. Just let me end this. <laughs> so unfortunately my time did run out, but I figured like, okay, that seemed to have happened because I instigated it, because I jumped and I started hovering. So I think it may have been my fault that that happened. So I figured next time, okay, you know what? I just won't do it. I just won't jump. That's fine. And here I'm having like an air battle with Eggman. Like, it's so cool. Like, if this had been an actual fight where I could just like fly around the stage where there was like low gravity or something and I could just shoot him in the air. That would have been awesome. But eventually I was just like, okay, I'm not hitting him. So I restarted the fight. I figured, you know what? Last time I instigated it, it was probably my fault that it happened because I jumped and I started hitting the hover button. So this time around, I'm not going to do it at all. I'm just going to stay on the ground. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to bother jumping at all. I don't need to. So at some point he hit me. I almost fell through the stage, but then I jumped and then I managed to save myself, which I thought was great, but then I accidentally jumped again and was found in the same predicament. I almost fell through the ground again, but then saved myself again, but that didn't help at all because now I couldn't land for whatever reason. I kept jumping almost as soon as I reached the ground. But after a lot of frustrations and about a, like two more attempts at the fight, I was finally able to find a way to actually hit him enough times to actually defeat him. And then this happened. I was laughing my ass off when this happened. It almost made the entire thing worth it to me. I was just like, dude. No way. No way. I can't believe this. No way. No way. Even right now, I'm listening back to it. It's making me laugh because it happens during the, <laughs> the result screen too. Oh, it's great. It's great. Oh boy. But fortunately, that is where Sonic's story ends as Gamma, and thank goodness, because oh boy, that was just straight up torture to do that. Honestly, I thought that this was going to be way shorter than the big video, and it looks like it's going to be as long. So I'm going to cut this now. I'm going to handle this the same way I did with the big video where I'm going to put Sonic's story in one part and then put the rest of the stories in part two. But if there's another challenge that you want to check out right now, my friend Nathaniel Bandy and I did a challenge video on Sonic Adventure 2, which is, is it possible to beat Sonic Adventure 2 using only Sonic? And I think you're definitely going to want to check that out. He did half the game. I did the other half of the game. And there's some pretty interesting things in there too that I don't think you would expect being Sonic in things like treasure hunting stages. So be sure to check that out and be sure to check out part two as well. Until then, stay safe, stay awesome. This is Char i5, signing off.